It's hard to believe that Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together was originally released all the way back in 1995 on the Super Nintendo, considering quite how sprawling it is and how influential it's been on the SRPG genre. It's even more surprising that more people in the modern gamer age haven't played or even heard of it, considering that influence, as well as having been released more than once in the past before. But we now have another chance to explore this gem with Tactics Ogre Reborn, remade and shaken up for a new audience on PS4, PS5, Steam and Switch, so we're here today to take a look at whether this behemoth of a game is worth the place in your library and whether or not it will just be another game in your ever-growing backlog or... Before I forget, a huge, huge thank you to Square Enix for gifting me a code for this game so that I can share it with you all and share my thoughts with you to, to help you decide whether or not this game is for you or not. Hello there beautiful, how are you doing today? My name is Josepha and as I say, we're here today to take a look at Tactics Ogre Reborn and have a review of it. But before we get started, don't forget to check out all of my social media links in the description box below, including Twitter, Twitch, Discord and Patreon. You can find me streaming all sorts of things over on Twitch and you're more than welcome to come and chat to me on there if you have anything you'd like to say about this particular video or any others that I might be making. Over on Patreon, I do always shout out one of my patrons every time I release a new video. And today that person's going to be Brenna, who has been a supporter of my for a long while now. A massive thank you goes out to you. And they have Aya Brea from Parasite Eve as their title card character and if you'd like a title card made just for you, just like Brenna has here, then perhaps you'd like to consider having a look in the link in the description box at my Patreon for all the benefits you could be benefiting from. Now those of you who are familiar with Final Fantasy, particularly the Tactics games or perhaps Final Fantasy XII, will recognise a lot of what you see in Tactics Ogre, and that's no coincidence. Yasuni Matsuno designed this game along with much of the Eve release games that contain the Tactics games and many of its lead developers, including Akihiko Yoshida for character design and Yutoshi Sakimoto from music direction, also carried on to those games. So if you've been looking to scratch that classic tactical RPG itch and haven't enjoyed Tactics Ogre, do yourself a favour, skip watching this video entirely and just go grab reborn. Trust me, it's well worth your time. Now you play as Denim, an oppressed teen living in the aftermath of a civil war that happens to be named after the material that jeans are made out of, who, along with his sassy sister Kashua, and his prick of a best friend Vice, who is very clearly the inspiration for Final Fantasy Tactics' Deleter, seeks to overflow, th overthrow the self-proclaimed leader of the country. The story is so vast and full of social dilemmas and choices, some of which influence one of multiple endings and character deaths before the end, that as I said before, I'm shocked this game came out on the SNES. Now isometric ASRPGs are a genre we've seen many, many times with licenses like Disgaea, Front Mission, Course Final Fantasy, and even Pokemon have taken the, this genre on in the past. But Tactics Ogre, along with the original Fire Emblem, was one of the core games to shape that genre. And seeing that core gameplay play out so well, even now at the end of 2022, is a delight. The core gameplay is very much a chess style affair, as many SRPGs tend to be, with certain weapon types dominating others, and positioning on the board being just as important as the characters you take with you. Now there's a plethora of different named characters to recruit, as well as generic classed characters or jobs for characters to scout, all of which of course I named after different types of cloth like linen and cotton to suit the role that the protagonist clearly laid out to battle with and experiment to with your heart's content. And the challenge of the original Tactics Ogre is still very much present with very challenging fights all the way through the game and there's plenty of them. This is a game that is designed to last. Now I've played a fair amount of it and I still have a long old way to go. Now, of course, none of this is actually addressing the changes that Tactics Ogre Reborn presents from the original. Now, I have not played the original, but I've spoken to many a player who has, and having conversations with them has actually been quite enlightening. So the tarot system that was in the original game has been removed completely in order to streamline the experience, and replaced by a card system which presents randomly spawning buff cards on the battlefield that can buff the character that stands over it for a particular stat, which adds a unique twist which celebrates the battle-to-battle -battle gameplay rather than grinding a particular playstyle. And this is even further augmented by the fact that between chapters your party has a hard level cap to prevent you from over grinding and making it so you actually have to play the game properly rather than auto spam a training stage and make the game too easy for yourself. Now your party also gains XP equally with lower level characters gaining a little bit more than those that are already seasoned, meaning that bringing new characters into the fray to learn new skills, etc. is a lot less cumbersome and awkward than other SRPGs and you don't have to worry about one, any one character fainting, it, well no, not dying because permadeath is still very much a thing in this game if a fainted character is left out for too long, but they, they'll still gain the XP that they need. 
slightly new, more contentious edition is the introduction of the Chariot Tarot, which allows you to turn back the hands of time in order to rethink any moves you believe you may have made a mistake on, and branch off of a temporary timeline so that you can figure out your best play at any given time, and even return to the one you made originally if you find that the new one is no good for you. Now this might seem like a lot of unnecessary help for SRPG veterans, but for newcomers to this kind of game, it could be a godsend, and for those who don't like it, feeling that it might be a little on the cheating side, can simply just not use it. New automated AIs for your characters can also make whatever grinding you do feel the need to do much more bearable, and even make real fights a little more manageable, because with up to 12 characters to control, then maybe you don't want to control all of them. And you're also allowed to set singular characters to be automated if you so choose, which means you can control the characters you feel you need to, whilst letting the AI do the work for the ones you don't. Now, I absolutely cannot talk about Tactics Ogre Reborn and not mention its incredible soundtrack. Full orchestrations of Sakamoto's original score booming through, which, with along with the, the beautiful new character art and the style of the font and the speech bubbles, all gave me chills of reminiscence and nostalgia from one of my favourite games of all time, which Matsuno also happened to helm back on the PS1, which was Vagrant Story. The game is now completely voice acted as well, with excellent performances across the board, that much like a lot of the game presented here, I know I keep saying it, but I keep forgetting that this game came from 1995, and honestly, if we could get a little Vagrant Story action on the side that comes off of this, I wouldn't be mad about it. Now, if I have any form of critique for Tactics Ogre Reborn, it's that we've kind of been spoiled by the whole HD 2D, you know, like, plethora of titles we've had in the last year or two, in, like, Octopath Traver Traveler, Live Alive, and particularly Triangle Strategy, which is itself an SRPG, which makes the sprite work of Tactics Ogre look a little meagre in comparison to all the effort that's been put into the rest of the game. It would have been absolutely incredible to have seen this game in that style. Although maybe, maybe Square Enix is saving such an occasion for a potential Final Fantasy Tactics remake? Though that might be wishful thinking on my part. It is also worth mentioning that this is a game that you will absolutely want to sit down and play with, with a good, for a good period of time if you're planning on progressing through the story. As even singular fights can take anywhere from 20 minutes up, and you'll want to do a fair few of them in a session so that your pace doesn't feel glacial. But if you're playing this on a Switch or a Steam Deck, you can crack it out, do a couple of training missions, and then leave it if you really want to. So finally, let's ask the big question, should you play Tactics Ogre Reborn? If you are of any kind of fan of the SRPG genre, I absolutely recommend this game, 100%. It's a stunning remake of one of the founding fathers of the genre. It streamlines pretty much every rough edge that the original version of the game and the PSP version of it originally had making it just so much easier and more just nice to play. And it still manages to retain a huge story, a strong level of player customization, and deep and challenging content that will keep the player engaged for a long period of time. All of this is topped off with an incredible musical score, full voice acting, beautiful artistic direction to create a renaissance for a classic amongst its peers. However, it may not be for everybody. This game is not easy. Let me just tell you that. This game is still very difficult, even with more of the complications removed from it. You can make this easier with the chariot tarot mechanic if you want to, but some people may think that that might be leaning a little too on the easy side. And, you know, regardless of whether you use it or not, you will still want to spend a good amount of time in a play session when you're playing this game. It is somewhat sad to see this game not get the HD 2D treatment that other games like it have gotten in the past just because the rest of the artistic direction is so stunning and so beautiful that it really speaks to me on a deep level and I'm really sad to not see it just just that little bit extra but I cannot recommend this game enough if you want something to really sink your teeth into do not let the old school styling fool you this is a fantastic game from start I'm sure all the way to finish I have not finished it yet but I, I'm looking forward to the day when I do so that's going to be all for today's video. I've taken all the makeup and everything off now, and if you'd like to know more about the kind of makeup work that I do, you're more than welcome to come and find me over on Instagram under Josepha. It's all under the same name. And once again, a huge thank you to Square Enix for gifting me a code for the game so that I can share my thoughts with you all. And let me know what you guys think of Tactics Ogre and whether this video has helped you make a decision on whether you might like to purchase it or not. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notification of future videos I might be making. I have a ton of Square Enix related content coming so a massive thank you goes out to them and to you for watching. See you later beautiful, have a great day.